the one who's going to come after us. Uh, the respect between the two clans is slowly disappearing. If you were born in the year that I was born, you would have learned it. I'm going to speak English and clink it okay. because I'm sure that most of you are not thorough with the Clinket language. I feel sad about what happened here. I am one of the scholars for See Alaska. When they have a problem, they call a meeting of the scholars. And we try to teach them what happened a long time ago. In my home, <clears throat> Yakata, there was still the respect due to when I was born, when I was small. I can say, tell this whole thing in Clinket. Uh, it would confuse you as you go along. But when I was four years old, my mother decided that we'd leave Yakutat and come to Juneau. And I started school in Juneau, six and a half, or six years old. The school, as maybe you know, the Indian village. Right by the NB Hall, there's this house with got all kinds of totem poles and stuff in there. That was the school that I started in. And Six and a half years old, my mother said, well, you've got to go home. you got to go back to Yakutat. And <clears throat> I remember the day the boat came in, Alaska steamship came in, and I climbed up halfway to the mountain, up to that where the train used to come across with all the rocks and stuff. And that was the uh, crusher. You crush all those rocks and take the gold out of it. And then they used to find it there, take it out in the bay, and this great big scar would turn over like that when they pull the plug in. After it goes down, then they pump it out. And I used to stand there and watch it. But I, my mother told me that I had to go to 
for Yakutat. And in a way, it was one of the great blessings in my life. Because my uncle was 14 years old when he danced in Sitka. What happened is the governor of a state of the um, territory of Alaska said there will be no more dancing, there will be no more hot latches. Right behind him, not very long, I guess it was the missionaries that told the governor that there will be people coming through here to teach. The way you have a God, and we found out that our way of living to know that there is something above us, the spirit above us in them days. And we rendered this. But it wasn't long after that the Bureau of Indian Affairs came in and built a school. And you used to get punished for speaking, clinking, around the school. I know firsthand because after I went to the BIA school and back to Yakutat, I too was forbidden to speak my language. And the next time you got caught, you got whipped with shaving strap, leather, And if you got caught again, then you went down to the stock thing to chop wood. All after school was out. And the shed didn't have any lights in it. I remember that very well. I will never forget it for my whole life. But I kept speaking with my <coughs> language clinker because my uncle was very traditional, hot job. My clinket name is Wurtschukhuij. And if everybody had a rope, if we had a rope here and everybody held on to it, that's what it means. You hang on to it. But after my uncle died, they gave me two more names because of what my, I had comp accomplished. I was the last one in Yakutat who grew up in his uncle's house. And my uncle, like I told you, is very traditional. You do the respect to all the elders. You help all the elders and you help all the little ones that's coming up behind you. You take their hand and you live by the creed that was given to young men from the time they were six and a half, seven, and going into eight. You could go and live with your uncle. You don't live with your family because your family is going to make you lazy. That's what they believe then. And that's the way I grew up. I learned the parable stories, a lot of the parable stories. I learned the way the raven taught us. And Raven was always trying to wrangle some way, somehow, 
wrangle food from people. And as I started working for the airline, I traveled part through Europe. I started part through the Far East. But then I discovered something in London. I went down to the Towers of London, they call it. And the Towers of London is where all the crown jewelry is. All the crown hat, capes, batons, feet. The door on that building is as small as it is that steel door, that thing. Once you step inside of there, you cannot stop walking. You have to go through there, but at that same time, you're trying to see everything that the king and queen use. And when you come out the other side, <clears throat> down at the lawn, there's some beef eater guards there. They've got that flat hat on top, the carries on it. Look like they carry the spear and the long tonic. I was watching them, then I noticed something in the back of them. And I had to walk all the way across there and ask them, how come? How come you're guarding those ravens? There was ravens in those cages. And the guy said to me, we here in England believe that if those ravens disappear from there, Britain's going to fall in the hands of an enemy. Smart raven, I said. Always wrangling something to get eat. They feed him, train, take care of him. But that then and now. I often wondered why a man could condemn the belief of another man. We believed in the spirit. We believed the animals got spirit. All of these things. And when I started working with C. Alaska on such scene, theirs was to go to extent to teach leadership. And leadership is something that is taught to a young man who is with his uncle. From the time he is small, and the leadership of his, what you call, in a uh, single word now, I forgot to talk in here. But you learn all of the parables, all in the lifestyle of the raven telling the parable. But in order to learn the Clinkett side is endurance. And I thought about it. It's such a funny world. They whipped me for speaking my language. And now they want to pay me $30 an hour to teach my language. That's a funny world to me. I just have to laugh at it sometimes. But we nearly lost it completely. That last dance in 1904 that was held in Sitka, the Kaguan Tom, a box house, Phuket, Phuket Tom, you call them actually, they went to the governor and asked the governor, can we have one more? Can 
we have one more part left. Huh. He really followed up. He said, yes. The Kaguantan invited all of the villages in Southeast to come to Sitka and have this one pot lodge. Is this the reason that we're here? As I look at you young people, that we really lost our language. My uncle kind of brainwashed me because he was 14 years old when he went to dance in this potlatch. And he used to tell me about me. And yet, we were forbidden from that point on. And we never did teach our language. We never told the parables to our young people. And the raven stories were told. They were locked up in a box. And that's why for those of you who know about the incoming song, opening the box of knowledge, because all of our knowledge that up to that time was put into that box and locked up. And so that's the way I look at it, the reason somebody, a lot of people didn't know why. All of a sudden we couldn't talk our language and all of a sudden we were segregated. And now we're trying to get our language back because my uncle, like I said, really brainwashed. He used to say, our language is going to be lost, and so our way of life is going to be lost. And now you know why you're sitting there studying Clinket language, because we nearly lost it. They made you ashamed of who you are if you're Clinket. That's what they did. And when I was going to high school, Mount Lejko, there was a lot of people, 500. And you could walk up to quite a few of them. I said, well, where you come from? He said, I come from Juneau. Well, where do you come from? I come from Ketchikan. Nobody says that from the little village. But that's where they came from, a lot of them. They were made ashamed of who they are. And I said to myself, in 1967, I took my family to Hawaii because I started working for the airline. And I happened to hear about the Polynesian Culture Center. Has anybody been there? It's beautiful. The way they sing, the way they dance, and the way they put it together. And what I noticed that they were very proud college young people. Polynesian Culture Center has seven different islands that they represent. Students from those seven different islands are brought there. And then they built it, their straw houses just the way they do it, the things in the seven built, uh, straw houses are from their home all together. In the evening, they have a performance 
at somebody's time, the way I felt, it bring tear to my eyes what we had and what they had taken away from us. I will lay it on you straight. That's the way I felt. We have a way of life just as beautiful as the Hawaiians did. And when I retired from the military, I said, I'm going to teach my young people from the smallest so that they can be proud and have self-esteem. They can say, I'm quicker and I'm just as good as anybody else. Where the signs used to be in Juno, no Indians or dogs allowed. And that was fought by Mrs. Pradovich. That's why we're sitting here. And it's sad that they had come through. I always thought all of the big leaders across the United States, what did they fight for? Cochise, Geronimo, Red Cloud, Crazy Horse, Sable. <coughs> they were fighting for their way of life as you are doing right here. I don't think you ever heard anybody speak to you like that, huh? But it's true. It's true that we nearly lost our language and we nearly lost our way of life. And like I say, it's going to be up to you because I already picked my man who's going to come behind me. And he's a, one of the best dancers I know. I told him, you've got to hang on to the song and the dancing. And I'd like to say thank you to each one of you. Because you are fighting for your self-esteem. And don't ever, like they told me, don't ever forget the little ones. If you start there, like I did there at four years old, it's a fight uphill. But it's a fight for your way of life. That's what I always say. It's beautiful. Especially when that drum hits. Boom! That's what we come and I've been to all of the celebrations except the first one. And I want you to be proud of yourself and I want you to be proud of your life that you have encountered here. You know what? I'll just tell him a while ago, if you tested me on this one here, you'd have to flunk me because I don't know how. I didn't start. I started speaking when I was four years old and my brother used to read me out, took me off a book. And he was already going to school when I came back up. And I thank you very much for having me here because somebody told me they were going to set a boundary line up there and told us that you have five minutes to make a presentation. And I can tell you the history of my people back over a thousand years. The stories that my uncle used to tell me. The way we used to hunt, fish, work, 
way we used to treat everything around us. And if you forget to do part of the work, I always tell my dancers, you're going to become nothing but a social security number. That's it. Because you won't have the feeling from the inside. They call it the scene as having strength. Up down. But it takes to woo such thing, the strength you got to have within you. And the way they used to teach you little kid, endurance to the cold, hunger, fear, and also never give up. Kill the sick is what they call it when you give up. There's a lot to what you're doing here. And I'd like to say thank you because I could sit here for days and tell you the story of wow. And now I find out that the Chinese agents that seen they brought me down here and they asked me, how does one become? Because Ha, because Ha is the man who never gives up. He's the one trained with to woo such thing. And so, when you get home, you write it on the wall, and it will remind you every day of what you have to have in order to be a real good public speaker, because we need public speakers between the eagle and the raven. And they respect each other, because in the olden days, the leader of the whole clan had a spear. And when you come to the potlatch, he's the one that does all the speaking. To the man in the other clan who has the spear. Only those two people used to talk. If somebody else wanted to talk, he has to go to talk to the man with the spear, the head man. And before he gets that, there was a strong respect between two clans, between families, between individuals. And that, I think, is just about lost completely. So, each one of you, the ones that are raven and the ones that are eagle, you get to know each other because that's the first thing my dance group has to do. You get on that side, all ravens over there. I want all the eagles over there. And I want you eagles to go down there and shake hands with every one of the ravens and introduce yourself in your own language. And I tell those young people, I want you to learn that. Who you are. Where you come from. Why do you have that name? And why is it most of them have an animal as the crest on their regalia? 
because that crest has accomplished something for the, that clan, that group of clan. Ravens, beavers, brown bear, all of them. And if you learn those things, that could make you proud of who you are because you will know who you are, that you have a culture that has been here from time immemorial. Okay? You should understand that. If you don't have a clicker in your home, well, then you have to respect yourself because you are learning it and don't give up. That's what your uncle is going to say to you. I'll take his place. Okay? Okay. Well, it's cheese. It's cheese plain. Uh -huh. Okay, it's cheese. Okay? You learn what you have to do? Uh, if you don't do it, I'm going to come after you. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say that, I am, uh, I got 23 years as a military man. Uh, and I'm always proud to see a man who's trying to better himself and look for a distance. He's got the same cross swords that I have in the military. I'm a tank commander, but that's why I'm deaf. I'm completely deaf. If I just take these off and you say something, I can't hear you. I'm disabled. And I lived through it. Thank you very much.